Hello everyone, welcome to the last part of this module where we will be looking at benefits of B Corp and the role of a B leader. So far we've looked at the B Corp movement, the B Corp community and the B Corp certification where we looked at the certification process as well as the assessment itself, how it's created and how to navigate the platform. So we're going to dive into why do organizations actually want to certify as a B Corp? And then what role will you be playing in the movement as a B leader? So let's dive into this. Um, when you talk about companies certifying as a B Corp, the process itself is pretty intense. And most people will kind of go in there and wonder why would an organization want to go through this process? It's super intense. Um, and, and what actually drives them. So the first bit on why companies choose to certify is the idea of leading a movement. B Corp set a gold standard on what it is to be a good business or a good company. By being part of this, you set yourself aside as being a leader in how, what it means to use business as a force for good. Within the African community, when we were actually launching B Lab, we did a founding B Corp drive here in Kenya, and we got a lot of interest from organizations, um, especially their leaders, who wanted to be the first. Uh, so this whole idea of leadership, of being one of the recognized ones who um, establishes the movement or who is part of this movement is incredibly um, enticing for a lot of organizations. Another reason why companies want to certify is to build relationships. Most of these organizations, especially in the region, are doing something that's unique or different, and they tend to be the square peg that's trying to fit into a round hole. Um, so the B Corp movement enables them to connect with people who think like them, people who face challenges similar to them, people who face opportunities similar to them, and be able to also find others who they could become part of their supply chain, their customer base. So it's really a powerful community where you can network and get as many relationships as you possibly can, or even just get a chance to sit and hear amazing things that people are doing and be inspired over and over again. The Vico movement is also an interesting way to attract talent. More and more people are looking for work that um, not only pays the bills, but also something that they can identify with and marks their value. Granted, in Africa, this is still in early stages and depends on which market that you're in. But even in attracting talent, the B Corp movement does have some partnerships with universities where we're able to go and speak to different students about this movement and the idea behind it. And through that, we've been able to get um, students to do internships. Uh, we've been able to get even loan forgiveness programs where if somebody goes to work for a B Corp, um, the university can forgive their loan because they're going to do something that is impactful. So in as much as it's not direct talent attraction, it, it is something that we're starting to see pay dividends in the market right now. But we are also aware that in this market, most people are still driven by they need a job first. Another big thing is it helps an organization to improve their impact. B Corps have to continuously work on improving. As we said, our assessment is challenging. Every three years, we update it. Um, so it makes companies work on continuous improvement rather than saying, okay, this is it. I've gotten my 80 points, so I'll sit back and do nothing else for the next 10 years. So it really does create that environment for people to want to improve, to want to learn how they could do more, they could do better, and to even tap into the different networks to learn on how they could do more and do better. Um, on amplifying the voice, I was trying to think about the, the, the proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So this is the whole idea behind amplifying the voice. The community together has a stronger stand than if you try and do something on your own. So the B Corp certification helps you to be able to tell the story of your organization, standing on the shoulders of others who have done similar. 
So you're able to stand by your mission. You're able to stand with your community together, showing that business can be a force for good. And it helps you by enabling you to brand it through B Corp certification um, and to amplify it also through the network you truly work in. And lastly, companies certify because it helps them protect their mission. They're able to raise capital without feeling like they would have to sacrifice on their impact because from the beginning, they do show their commitment to this. They are able to navigate even changes in leadership. So you're shifting from having the hero CEO, who's the one that's the visionary that wants to create all this impact, um, to the point where he or she, when they leave, that goes out the door. Instead, B Corp, by becoming a B Corp, you move away from the hero leader to being a company that actually values this. So whether there's a change in leadership or not, the mission still stays important and paramount for the company to achieve. So those are the reasons why we see organizations certifying. There are, as you continue talking to companies, there are different approaches that you will have to take in how you engage with them. There are those companies who for them, it is, I started my business to create this. You do not need to explain for me why I need to do this. Let's get started. So the no brainers. This is why I do what I do. Let's go at it. I want to get this done. You have the ones who are authentic. So they want to put the values that they have in practice. And then you have the disruptors. Down. So like we want to change how things are, are going. We want to grow. We want something that helps us to stand out. So with them, you also use a different approach in, in how you talk about the benefits for the movement. There's the philosophers. All narrative is broken. We want an alternative that works. The provocateurs. Our clients are cynical about the private sector and we want a new stance and the incentivized, our investors or parent company wants us to do this. So depending on who you meet, whatever benefit you talk about would have to speak to their voice to enable them to be able to use, to see the value in this movement. The no brainers, the ones who say, this is why I started my business. You do not need to explain why this is needed. If you look at this, where would they actually land? The ones who are authentic, they want to leave their values. You can also see them represented in the why, why companies certify. The ones who need to be incentivized, it's about the external. How can I show my investors, my parent companies that I'm doing good? Um, so depending on all of them, you could even switch up um, how you present on each of those benefits, but just know um, you adjust the language based on where a company is in, in their thinking. So what is it about B Corps that makes this whole certification unique? First, comprehensive impact analysis through the B impact assessment. The assessment and legal are big. The legal change is something that is unique to the movement and the idea behind a global community. So you're all interconnected, interdependent. You all see the benefit in the collective as being part, uh, as being key to making a change in how the current system works. What have we seen as key market drivers when it comes to companies in this market engaging with B Corp movement? Most important, I would say, is leadership. The leadership values have been key. And the leadership values here is the ones who we're talking about, the no-brainers, the authentic ones, the disruptors. So as a leader of an organization, they already are leaving their values within the organization and immediately um, relate with what the movement is. So they shift or they drive their companies to become certified B Corps um, rather than even the employees driving the company to become B Corp, I would say for the African market. Investors are a big driver for companies to certify. Um, impact investors view B Corp certification as part of a due diligence process. So it helps to relieve some of their due diligence work. So investors do tend to be a key driver here. 
some consumer expectations and I'd say this is niche based, um, but we are start as, as I showed you, as, as you saw in earlier on, 60% of consumers in Africa are given the option would want to buy from responsible companies. So we're starting to see that consumer drive for organizations that are doing well, but noting that this also is, um, does come with some financial costs, so it tends to be a bit more niche, but it's becoming better, it's stronger and stronger in how it does. Another key market driver is companies are starting to see a stronger performance link between being sustainable um, and profit. So this strong performance is driving more and more companies to want to articulate and to showcase how but being sustainable, they are driving better performance in the organization, um, leading to them even being more attractive, not only to the investors, but to workers, to uh, consumers as well. So in this space, I'd say those are the main drivers. So even as you're engaging, you want to make sure you have leadership buy-in. You'd want to know where the company is in as it relates to investor rounds. So if they're investing primarily from impact investors or investors who have an ESG requirement, this is one of those tools that they could use to be able to highlight how they're doing. Um, if they're in a sector that is consumer driven, where consumers are very aware about what they're buying, so think about organic products, um, locally made products, those ones also, this certification could be a way to showcase how they are meeting that consumer expectation. Or if you have those companies that want to showcase their strong performance, linking both profit and impact, then that this is also a narrative that you want to share with them. So what we, we've seen what company, why companies certify, we've seen the different ways in which they interact where they're like oh it's a no-brainer or mm, my investor requires it we have seen what makes the b corp certification unique so as you're talking to them you're saying comprehensive analysis of how you're working the legal aspect of it the assessment that is comprehensive and the fact that they join a global community of over 3,700 companies that being said you will still meet some resistance, it's a lot of resistance, let's not say some. So one of the common things we hear is, this is only for small businesses, and this mainly applies when you're talking to larger organizations. Um, and it's important for you to be able to showcase why this also applies to larger organizations. So the largest speaker of globally is the known North America, whose revenue is about $6 billion, so it is actually not just for small businesses. But then the thing is, when you talk to a small business, then they'll say this is only for big businesses. Because again, you have the denote. But it's always important to flag this. The community ranges from one person startup to multinationals. The assessment is tailored so a company is able to see a different assessment based on its size, sector, and geography. So the known will not see the same questions as Equatilibrium that's based here in Kenya, um, in Kakamega. So again, being able to know that this is some resistance that you will receive and what the response is for that. The other thing that you hear is this is only for consumer brands. And actually 75% of our community are non-consumer facing businesses. So we tend to have a lot of service driven organizations, manufacturing as well. And this is, I would say a way for them to also be able to set themselves aside apart from other people in their space for the non-consumer guys. For consumer brands, they really have a lot of certifications that they work with. Um, the non-consumer side of things, certifications are not as as available, I would say, as the consumer brands. So again, being able to flag that, like, yes, we do have consumer brands that are part of this, but majority of this is non-consumer based is also important. This is just another certification. No, it's not. We look across your whole business. So it's not just about one aspect, but it takes a realistic view of your organization as is right now and also offers them additional insights on areas where they could improve action items and tools that they could use to help on those improvements. Um, 
And then also we still add the aspect of the legal change that they need to make so that they're ensuring their mission is locked for the long haul rather than dependent on owners staying the same, leadership staying the same. So from this session, you have been able to understand the benefits of becoming a certified B Corp, the current market drivers in Africa when companies want to certify, the different approaches you could take for different companies, especially around um, your pushback, any pushbacks, and how you could tailor your pitch to different people in the organization. And we'll dive even further into this, um, especially on how to approach your pitch to different roles in the organization. Um, there will be material where you will have case studies or pitch um, things to prompt you to think about how you could articulate the benefits of the organization even better to um, meet the needs of the organization you're approaching. So then, what is your role as a B leader? At B Lab, globally, what we're trying to do is build this B economy, the alternative to capitalism, where we're saying business can be a force for good. And we're doing this through the certified B Corp work, the BIA users, different investors, academics, uh, working on legal change through Benefit Corp. So all of that is part of this bigger economy. It's a lot of work, requires a lot of attention, but the biggest piece of it is the certified B Corps. Your role as a B leader is to really help us here in the market to create more awareness of the B Corp framework to help organizations to understand what it is, how they could improve their impact in the world, how they could transform so that they are forced for good in the world, and then guide organizations through the B Corp certification. So that's quite a chunk of things that you know this program is trying to achieve. And you will be one of those people who, as a sustainability leader, find this tool as helpful as you have these discussions. It will be helpful in the sense that you will have a tool that can be able to show a company in real time the type of impact that they're creating across the different stakeholder groups that they touch point on. If they're not ready for B Corp certification, the tool enables you to have an improvement plan that you could put the company through. So your role here is to really help us develop this framework, develop its um, awareness in the market and enable or educate the, the companies to know how they could do better as organizations. So you will be uh, readily available experts across the region, across different sectors, who could be used to help create this lasting impact in how the B Corp framework shows up in the region. So the program here, what we're doing is we're aiming to create a league of extraordinary individuals who will be able to support us to grow the B economy, to accelerate this behavior in business. As you've seen the team, it's four full-time staff members with some support from Victoria and I, we can cover the whole geography. So by leveraging, leveraging your expertise, we'll be able to accelerate this change, not only within your organization, but across different organizations in the region. You will be able to support your main role will be to support your company or the client that you're working with through the certification process if they want to apply for certification. If they just want to know where they are in terms of their performance um, as it relates to impact, then helping them be able to use the B impact assessment as a tool to measure their impact performance and benchmark their performance across uh, the global um, the global community that we have built through the B Impact Assessment. Outside of just this, the other big piece is you'll be able to facilitate or could facilitate workshops. So you could even start your own B leader training. Uh, you could be, as we are invited to many workshops that we can't make, make it, you could also be those people who we recommend to go to workshops or, or come and work with us to go facilitate workshops. Um, we will be you will be part of the revision of the standards, given that you'll be working a lot with companies. So we'll also be relying on you um, through the B Impact Assessment tool to just provide us with uh, 
feedback on the standards and how it's showing up. So all in all, there's a lot that you can do here, a lot of it that could be financially um, beneficial, but in, in the grand scheme of things, all very impactful in changing the mindset in the region on what it actually means to be driving positive change in the market. And as you work with companies, it's always clear to know um, the roadmap that you'll be going through as a B leader. If the company wants to certify, they'll always start, or you will always start with, actually, no, they will always start by asking you, why should I become a B Corp? So we'll offer you with dialogues that you've been used to engage with your internal stakeholders to be able to now explain the benefits, um, identify who within there should be your champion, um, identify the practices that will help get them to the B Corp questions. You already know how to navigate the platform because you would also need to guide them through it. How do you engage the different stakeholders in the organization so that they're able to answer questions at the right times, but they're able to meet their deadlines or long-term commitments, how companies can update and finalize the BIA. All of these are things that you'll be able to do as, as, um, as a company is going through the process and these are the stages that they will make you go through. Um, so as you think through this, as you see your role um, and as you see the roadmap, just make sure you are able to um, identify how you navigate all of this. And then once the company gets to the verification process, it's then handed over to the standards trust um, and then comes back to us and you can help the company if they need to make the legal change, if their score has dropped below 80 points, whatever it takes just to get them to the finish line. So as you're thinking through this, one of the areas that we look at is who do you actually need to engage with as you're talking to people about becoming a B Corp and why? So there are multiple stakeholders in an organization. I'd say key ones are board members. Board members, you engage with them because there is legal change that needs to be made by the B Corps. Um, and they're the ones who approve this. So we need to have a consensus from the board for a company to make their legal change. So make sure that you do have board approval. In some organizations, they also are the ones who look at the social and environmental practices or set the goals for the organization. And they are also the ones who oversee improvement and accountability for an organization. So getting buy-in from the top level of leadership and governance is super critical for your success. The CEO is also an important person. They need to buy into this because the CEO also impacts the board buy-in. If you get the board to buy in and the person who actually executes on the ground does not buy into this, it's a harder road to climb. So this is also an important role to make sure that buys into it. And they're also critical because they're the ones who actually um, bring to life the mission and values of the organization and approve new initiatives. The finance team, super critical because they're the ones who need to be convinced most of the time why are we spending this money to get the company certified? They're the ones that will be approached to support answering the governance questions because a lot of that has to do with financing and the disclosure questionnaire that has to do with risk. And there will be new reporting requirements, especially for larger organizations. So again, making sure that that team is also bought into this and understands why is super critical. The people who run operations are also important as a lot of questions are asked on how a company operates. HR, there's a huge section around workers and that tends to be one of the heavier weighted questions. So they also need to buy in because a lot of their time will be taken up. The marketing team, which will be critical on how they coordinate the communication, the annual reports, the sustainability reports, especially for larger organizations the employees of the organization as well. And this might come in a bit later once the company has certified, but sometimes also if the company is going through this and it's a large organization and it would require a lot out of the employees, it does help to have a session where this is explained to the employees, even for startups, because startups, again, resource constrained, 
when you are able to talk to the larger team to make them understand where this is going, where this is being done, it helps to move the process along even faster. In some instances, you would want to engage with the suppliers because they will be required to provide information. Um, and I would say this most of the time you'd leave it to the company, um, the person who runs operations. But in some regards, if it's a large organization or if it's a startup with limited resources, they might be they might require you to do this for them just to save them on time. And lastly, for big organizations, the CSR team, um, they would want to know how to integrate B Corps um, and provide you with information around what they're doing around CSR. So these are the people who you would want to touch point on. I would say for a startup organization, it's not going to be as granular as this is. It might just be you need to talk to the CEO and that's it. You've, bought, you've gotten leadership buy-in and he or she will make sure the board and the rest of the team is aware of this or the CEO in most cases will do everything on their own and then the company certifies. Um, uh, but in general, these are like the key departments and which areas of the assessment, the key departments will be needed. Uh, so it's always good to make sure you have this clear uh, in front of you so that even as people ask, you know, how much time is required? What resources will I need? Then you're able to say, well, someone from finance will be required to answer questions around governance the operations team, if let's say it's a small organization, the ops team will be required for suppliers, for HR stuff. So just making sure that you know who to engage and why they are needed for, for this. So this marks the end of this module. So we from this last se session that we've done, you now understand your role as a B leader, the different engagement strategies you could apply, um, and who within the business needs to be involved and why. So we're going to wrap up this session and this module now. Um, there will be additional resources that will be provided for you to read and it will complement what you have learned. Anything that was not clear, please feel free to flag for us. We will be working on improving these records, recordings. Um, so please do let us know anything that was not clear. And we will see you on the next module.